Well, I just did a few minutes of filming and then realized the camera wasn't running. Classic. Anyhow, I thought we'd go through the current project. I'm about to sort of start editing a bit with it, um, although I haven't finished filming. Um, but this, this is the current project. It's called Ding. <laughs> and what Ding does is every five seconds or so, it takes a photo. And if it sees people in that photo using some machine learning models, then it will, the Raspberry Pi will trigger a pin to run a motor that I've put in here and spins this bell up here. And that is what's going on here. This is just a bell that I ripped off a bicycle and then 3D printed some parts to like, I guess, retrofit it the way I want it to fit. So yeah, that's, that's ding. The idea came to me when, um, early in the week, a few days ago when I was riding a push bike, um, with my dad around the, the lake down the road, he goes all the time and I just joined him and there's a lot of people on that track and he just kept dinging his bell, like to let him know he was passing. And I was just like, that should be automatic. So. Anyway, came home and sort of ripped a bell off the bike, an old bike, and then uh, just started working out how to use the motor with a Raspberry Pi to trigger the motor and spin the bell. Um, ended up buying a 3D printer just to make life a lot easier. And yeah, now it's pretty much done. We went down, got some footage with it yesterday. Um, it did work, but it was really windy as well. And there weren't very many people at the lake at all. Um, so yeah, it was kind of weird. They were like, we were riding one way around the lake. It's nine kilometers around. And I don't know how many miles that is. It's probably like five or six or something. And we were riding around one way and everyone is walking around the other way. <laughs> and it wasn't only until probably the last few kilometers when we started seeing some people going the same way direction we were going uh, so we only got a few shots really and also the bell was only spinning every time it would go off for about 200 milliseconds which wasn't really enough time for the motor i think to like get some speed up and really sort of like ring so um got a little bit of footage very windy so audio is not great i don't think i haven't really listened um but we'll go down again uh, maybe tomorrow, I don't know, and try to get some more footage. Um, yeah, and I've, in the meantime, turned the um, time up for the bell to like 800 milliseconds or something, so it like really gets spinning and rings. Um, actually, I might even change that code a bit. I had that thought when I was trying to sleep last night. That instead of just running the code every five or six seconds, I probably want to run it like every second or so because the camera might like, sometimes it might miss people, I think, if like it takes the photo when there's a bump and so the photo gets blurry maybe. So it's probably a good way around that would be like taking photos a bit quicker, but then just debouncing, we call it debouncing the, um, the ding. So that just means if the ding has happened in the last, I don't know, say, six seconds then don't ding again but this way we're at least taking more photos more frequently but we're still only dinging maybe every six seconds because if you see someone um you know uh 10 seconds away or more and you're dinging every four seconds and it's like you're going to ding at them a few times before you even pass them which would just going to frustrate people <laughs> anyhow so been looking into a lot of storytelling kind of stuff on how to shape videos and I'm not really sure about this approach that I'm taking here, but I thought I'd just sort of like whack you here and you can listen to me think about it and just see where we end up. I don't know. So I'm going to take you I think you can see pretty good there. This is the figurine at the printer too, by the way. Getting a 
another run at 150% the size. So hopefully we can get that out there before it gets done. So ECU, maybe about here, I can have enough um, motion. Looks a bit crooked there. Yeah, a bit better. I think it's good enough. All right, get that mic back close. <sighs> okay, so Notion, 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 love this thing. This is the page for Dean. Um, might just have to take up a bit of space here. So I took this framework. Um, there's a, pay, a channel on YouTube called Film Booth uh, with Ed. Uh, it's really cool. He just sort of like talks through and analyzes YouTube channel stuff and like, you know, maybe like how to uh, optimize your for views. And then he's got another channel to like um, to monetize your channel and stuff like that. It's just quite interesting. And he does some experiments sometimes. Anyway, he just gave out this checklist, but I'm not sure it really fits the type of videos that I'm doing. But I figured at least it's a good start. And I think he's a bit of a bit of a pro at storytelling. So this kind of goes through his framework. So I've just dropped it into here really. And um, yeah, so shout out to him. Like have a look at his stuff at some point. It's pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, this one, I guess this is kind of where he thinks you'd start, right? It's title and thumbnail. That's totally standard. Um, you see the first video I've made on Legendaire, which is all about that, right? Like it's it's the most important thing and everyone kind of says that you should be thinking about that before you even uh, start to do anything, which I haven't <laughs> for this one. I did for the other one, but for this one, I'm kind of taking a bit of a different approach to try a few different styles. Uh, so in this one, I don't want it to be maybe as, um, as scripted. So like I haven't written a script for it actually at all. Um, I might a little bit just for like a narration voice over the video, but I want most of it to be like footage from, you know, the build and going around the lake. Although the footage from the build probably doesn't really have me talking in it so much. Just a lot of time lapses and stuff. Anyhow, start with a title. So like something short and punchy is great, but you also, it's not necessarily the best. You want to like really make it captivating or I'm just going to start simple. Like I made my dad an automatic push bike belt uh, or automating dad's push bike belt. Push bike belt is a bit of a mouthful. Bicycle bell might, might be, uh, might be better. I made it, I made my dad an automatic bicycle bell. That's kind of cool. Thumbnail, um, first person view from from the unit looking over um, the handlebars or and maybe the wheel. So it'd be pretty much what this camera is seeing. Um, but this this I'll probably just Photoshop the absolute hell out of this one and um, create some cool. Let's have a look at like first person view um, bicycle. Have a look at some images. Not really what I want um, from what I'm seeing just at the first glance. I kind of want to like look over the front wheel. So like um, as if the, the thing was mounted here, maybe kind of think that could look cool or it could just be handlebars. Not sure. I might just put the push bike, um, bring that in here and put it in front of the green screen. And, and um, oh yeah, kind of almost like something like this. Um, yeah, I don't know, it could be like an unsplash job. Unsplash. Um, push bike. No, it's, uh, better just keep calling it a bicycle. Bicycle. Um, TV. I don't know. If that'll. Hmm. Hmm. Don't know, don't know, don't know. Yeah, I think it might be a green screen job. Um, alternatively, we could just open up Photoshop and try to do a generative fill and see, um, <laughs> just see what it comes up with. Could be interesting. Um, 
this doesn't have to be perfect. It's just going to be like very draft. So um, uh, downloading some stuff, it says. I might just make this a little. Oh, I don't know what that is. A bit random. Not really useful. I don't know why I did that up. Get started. Oh, okay. It's because I clicked on this. What the hell that is? New file. Yeah, that's better. Custom. Uh, I think this is the YouTube thumbnail size 1920. So let's just start with that. Select subject. Generative. Where is that generative fill? Uh, maybe I can just select all. Generate generative fill. And I'll do first person view looking over the handlebars of a bicycle. I always struggle to spell that for some reason. It's like it just doesn't type very nicely. B I C Y. Um, um, the there should be people walking in front of the bicycle and there should be crosshairs on them as if the camera has recognized them. All right, this is the this would be freaking crazy if it did anything remotely close to what I'm trying to go for here. Let me zoom you back in there. Let's just see. All right, nearly done. <laughs> um, yeah, nah, that's not even not even close to what we we're going for. <laughs> uh, Oh, that's a bit freaky. Um, nah, not not really. All right, and then it's taken way longer than it should have, and it looks freaking awful. So all I've done is just I'm just gonna chop that section out of me just crafting this. I just kind of use Photoshop's generative fill to drop in some random gadget thing and um, whatever. But this is kind of like the initial idea of what the thumbnail might look like something like this like it, it could be an actual shot too like we could actually do a real shot from behind dad's bike and then just draw crosshairs on it and put some kind of like um ringing thing coming out of the unit out of ding on the when i've got it strapped to the handlebars um i think that'd be cool maybe yeah i think that's pretty good so if we go back over to Notion, we kind of know what our thumbnail is going to look like. I think it's kind of a cool one. If you get that whole um, machine learning image recognition aspect right, like showing like the targeting on the people and then like the reaction of that, I think that's kind of a cool, cool thing. Um, this is something, this is where I'm kind of saying that um, Ed's framework might not suit my niche um, because big, easy, new, safe, like the stuff that I'm doing is just like gadgety stuff, um, random gadgets and um, strange builds, makers. Definitely could be big in the future, but I think you often the pace that I'm going to be trying to make videos, I, I want to increase that a bit in the future. Hopefully, I'll, like if I can generate more funding, then yeah, I'll. I'll go crazy on the ideas and all this really cool stuff um so big mm, possibly not um but you know maybe we could swap that out for funny that's another good one um easy easy enough it took me a couple of days um and i think by easy he means like easy for other people to do which again not everyone's gonna on my niche like his his area people are actually trying to do what he's doing so in this one people are probably more just like keen on the entertainment value um new <laughs> i'm not actually sure i haven't even researched that to be honest don't usually like to look at things like that because chances are things have been done and then it kind of i'm not sure if i like the way it impacts 
um, my creative process once I see how someone else has done something similar. Um, so kind of happy to neglect it really. Safe, yeah, it's like totally safe. I mean, yeah, it's just a would make bike doll, right? Um, what burning questions did these bring up in your viewers? Hmm. Well, when they see this, they're going to be like, is that an automatic bike bell? I don't know. Is, can that bike see people? Um, geez, this is, this is tough. I'm not very good at this. Um, can that bike see people? Or bike or that gadget thing. Does it? Uh, does it ring the bell for you? See, this is probably maybe this is a good indicator of. Maybe this is a good indicator of it, like not being right for what I'm doing. Um, that or I'm just not good enough at thinking about what kind of questions people, you really got to put yourself in other people's shoes right here and just think about what kind of things they would be thinking when they see this. Um, yeah. Anyhow, you might just like not go into that too much because, uh, I'll probably sit here all night trying to think of stuff. Could even get ChatGPT on it and see if it can help me come up with some uh, burning questions. Um, a statement hook, write a story hook, write a question hook. So I think I need to, I think I'll put that link to the video down here. I'd need to go back and um, sort of look over what those types of hooks actually mean. Um, statement hook i think that would be like you know um this bicycle is 99 percent safer than other bicycles um, is 99 safer than others write a story hook um i'm not sure uh would that be something like maybe it's more to do with the story right so like something to do with dad not having to ring the bell anymore um or it could this probably would actually fit into the that title that we put up there really um i made my dad an automatic bicycle bell and then a question hook would be like I don't know what, what kind of question hook could we have? Um, question hook could be like, have you, do you get sick of ringing your bell at every single person or something like that? You know? Um, yeah. Has your thumb nearly fallen? Has your thumb ever have you ever almost had your thumb fall off from ringing your bell too much something like that big winner to be honest i kind of like this one for some reason i just think it kind of fits the maker style i you know i made this i did that um, it's kind of just fun. It's like straight up. It's like, you know exactly what this video is going to be about. Um, this one's like got a bit more mystery about it. You're like, oh, why is it 99% safe? And then you're like piecing that together with the thumbnail and you're like, hey, is that thing like recognizing someone and dinging? So that's also like possibly a quite a good one, I reckon. Because there's like a bit of mystery about that, but it's also like kind of telling you enough about what's happening the question hook 
I need to look into what that actually means a bit better. I mean, we could go onto YouTube and just let's just like browse that homepage and just see what we see what we see up there. So we. Ah, oh, look, there's one of Eric saying he has to delete his channel. That's, um, that is a bloody good title because the chances are he's not deleting his channel. Um, question hook YouTube sent me a dirty play button. Right. Okay. Mm. I mean, that's probably like the first one we saw, and that's... Oh, here you go. Can an umbrella made of water stop the rain? So, yeah, you could have like, can a bike belt be automated, automated or something? Can, a, can your bicycle um, have an automatic belt? No, yeah, that's not too bad. And then that ties in with that thumbnail pretty good, to be honest. Like, that is actually better than I thought. Hmm, anyhow. Step one, write a setup that follows the Ben system that lets people know you'll be covering all three of them. Right, so the Ben system is this big, easy, new, safe thing. So we probably should have filled that in. Big, <laughs> well, yeah, not really. Easy, yes. New, who knows, safe. Yeah, it is, but point is that it's fun so again i'm i'm not too fussed about at this point i'm not too fussed about trying to like conform to some frameworks like i really just want to like um i really just want to like create a video and at, at least like roughly follow some kind of a framework and really what i've just noticed from doing this right now is that maybe i will kind of stick to what i did in the first one which was kind of like a th the three act structure thing. So it's, it's similar. It's like the setup of like, um, this is an automatic bike, bike bell. Uh, and this is, I don't know, my old man, um, using it on people in real life. Um, it'd be cool to have a parallel narrative, which is like what I did with the paint bombs in the first one, just like falling on me. Um, cause it kind of like entertaining while everything else is going on. There's just like this other funny thing happening that keeps people engaged. Um, so yeah, that's like the first act. The second act then becomes, um, kind of like just telling, yeah, filling out that story of what happens. Um, I forget what they call it, maybe confrontation. And then the third act is like the kind of like the conclusion wrap up, um, and I really like that. And then within the second act, what I was kind of, that's like the build phase, right? When you're like showing the build of the project. And in that, that's like a nice way to do it is like, if this, then that, if this, then that, um, but this happens. So I need to do this, but then this happened. And it's like creates kind of flow through it. And within all that, at the same time, I would like to work on this problem exploration solution sort of thing. So like if you look at like a lot of the big channels, they'll like in the maker space, they'll often like, because it's all problem solving, they'll just sit there going through this like loop of, but then this problem happened. Um, so I was looking at how I could fix that. And then there was this blah, blah, blah. And I thought, well, you know, that's perfect for this. So we use that and voila, it solved our problem. But then that caused another problem over here. <laughs> Something like that. It's just like this loop of like problem exploration solution. So I think I might do something like that. Um, yeah, call to action hooks at the end. I don't know, call to action hooks. Probably just like drop a sub or drop a sub and then check out this other video. Um, so yeah, it's just all about like trying to create a, a real rough, rough script for the video and then I'm just going to try and more like just dot pointing um, where I want to go with it and then possibly I'll just freestyle it a bit more so yeah that's kind of where I'm heading with the ding uh, video at the moment
just need to go get some more footage of it working a bit better and maybe like some shots over the handlebars and stuff. Probably should jot the shut down the what I need to do so that when I go make sure I collect everything. And yeah, that's it. See you in the next one.